Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Zoo News Update. Uh, my name is Maxine, and I'm the curator here at Northumberland Zoo. So I want to show you some little projects that we've been working on. Obviously, the last four weeks, all we've done is guinea pig village stuff filming. So it's time to get you caught up on what we've actually been doing when we haven't been messing about with guinea pig houses. So uh, we are down opposite the hot house. Uh, Meerkats is just there, and there's a new door that's appeared. This area was always a massive storage shed and it used to be the old tractor museum so some of you may have seen it before but we decided that we could definitely make better use of the space and develop a brand new indoor nocturnal twilight area. As we were developing a new area we needed to make sure that it was heated for these nocturnal animals so we cut up loads of polystyrene boxes that we had in storage that we didn't want to throw away and we used them to insulate some water pipes and hook them into our existing biomass boiler so it has posh underfloor heating. Nocturnal animals have quite specific light requirements and there's been a lot of research done on types of light that you should provide them with and apparently red light is one of the best lights as it makes them more active. So we have the electricians installed a special time system and dimmer light so we can actually individually control each light to make sure we get the exact amount of brightness that we want. Once all the main structure work was complete, it was time to turn it over to the keepers, who then painted and themed the enclosures. Once the enclosures were finished and decked out, it was ready for the keepers to do their thing and get the animals moved in. The first task that they had was to catch up the sugar gliders in their existing enclosure. Which was pretty straightforward because the keepers knew exactly where they slept and curled up together. And yes, that is the sound of a sugar glider alarm call. One of the little sugar gliders had gotten wise to what was going on and managed to escape the little bed before they started catching them up. Um, so we're going to try and catch this little rogue glider who's decided to not stay with his family. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all five in the crate now, so we're going to take them over to their new enclosure. A few months ago, we had a pair of sugar glider joeys that had been abandoned by their mum that the keepers decided to take on and hand rear until they've fully grown. And one of the nice things about this new sugar glider enclosure is that we can integrate them back into the group. So Kim is going to let them loose now. Uh, so this is exciting. <laughs> These are the younger ones that we have. Um, so hopefully they enjoy it. Their new enclosure is designed to be uh, really natural for them. We've got plenty of uh, trees for them to climb, even the swindly ones, to keep them nice and agile. So, just see if this is going to try. There we go. There's one. She 
Then it was little Harry the Potteroo's turn to move in. Okay, so we've just moved Harry, uh, our potteroo, in with the sugar gliders and he's hopping around happily, so hopefully he'll settle in and love the place. Next up, time to catch up our girly troop of mouse lemurs. They're a little bit more tricky because they were not in their box this morning. As you can see, these are very agile animals and this is not an easy enclosure to try and catch them in, so this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Is that one of them then? Are they all in? That's all three, That's all yeah. Right. Perfect. and uh, just released them into their new enclosure, uh, which is much bigger than their old one. Uh, it went quicker than and other times, they were quite cooperative with us. Um, I think we did quite a good job of not stressing them out too much. Now that all the animals have moved in, it's time to take a little look and give you a sneak peek from the visitor's point of view. So this bit is not open yet to the public. It does look a little bit like the red light district just now, but we're just playing around with lights, trying to figure out what type of color works well um, for a public point of view um, and at the minute we're in phase red so uh, we're just seeing how that goes but what we've done is we've built a brand new kind of indoor twilight nocturnal area so you know where you used to enter the top of uh, kind of Critterland the twilight zone where the Jerboa and the Axolotl were all of that's been ripped out I'll show you that here in a second and where the sugar gliders and the mouse lemurs were living has been completely uh, emptied and they have moved into here so we've got two big brand new enclosures that we've been spending the last two months working on. So these two windows here are the sugar gliders. If you haven't seen the potteroo already, there's a little Harry, the potteroo, he lives in the bottom there. Um, so the sugar gliders have got a brand new house and it's got 10 foot tall walls. So look at how tall they are. So with these guys being a, an arboreal species, we wanted to give them loads of up space so that they could actually glide down. So those are the behaviors that we're looking to try and replicate and they've got so much more space to do it. And it's quite a bit darker in there as well. So we're hoping that will help promote more natural behaviors. And then in this window here, this is the mouse lemurs. So again, oh, there's a mouse lemur there. Look, it's right there next to the window. Don't know if you can see it, there's two of them. Oh my goodness. Um, and again, they've got loads more arboreal space. So the enclosure is a lot, lot taller. We've got a lot more feeding stations and things that are right next to the window. So you'll be able to hopefully get a better look at them um, and see how absolutely amazing they are. Because in the previous enclosures, the visibility wasn't great. So we wanted to give them much more space and give you guys a better opportunity at seeing them. So yes, we have got three female mouse lemurs that live in here. Um, at the moment and we have fitted this enclosure out so that we can actually hold another species in the bottom we're hoping to get another rodent species and that's all i'm going to say about that um but yes the mouse lemurs are amazing then we've got this lovely little corner exhibit here um which is going to be for a type of amphibian which will be cool come back around here and we've got mouse lemurs again very very difficult to see them uh with the camera this is a gopro not a night vision camera unfortunately uh, but yeah, this is epic. I've never seen them as good as this. So that's what we're hoping that you guys are going to be able to get to experience when you visit here at the zoo. And of course, in addition to these new enclosures, we've also got ourselves some more holding areas and some more extra spaces to keep animals. So in here, let me shed some light on the situation. This is our new kind of back area um, so that we can keep any invertebrates and amphibians and things like that that are off show so we don't necessarily have to have enclosures for everybody um, but we have lots of holding spaces and holding spaces is super important when you know you've got a zoo because there's always animals that need to come off show you're always getting animals in so having this space is just super special and then obviously 
this is the access door to go into the sugar gliders and the access door to go in the mouse lemurs. Um, so, and they've got little pop hatches here so that it stays nice and dark in there even if we're in here. So these new enclosures just make it extra nice for the keepers to be able to work in with the animals. There's lots of space, but it's also great for the animals too. It gives them loads more arboreal space and loads more jumping around space. And obviously, as you can see already, uh, they're really active. And we've got brand new heating system. This is all heated floors, which is all connected up to our biomass. So it's super sustainable um, and it's heating that we've already got. So it's not costing us any more during this energy crisis. Um, so let's have a little look at uh, the old twilight area, because obviously that has all changed as well. Um, yeah. So we're just coming into the uh, old bit of twilight. Um, this is the armadillo enclosure, as you know it. This is where the axolotl was. Um, and obviously this was everything else. So you can see we've been on a little bit of a demolition derby. Um, when we first came to this place and we actually first kind of had an animal park, uh, in here we used to have pens that had like rabbits and hamsters and uh, there was actually some meerkats along this wall here and down the bottom here we actually had uh, a budgie enclosure of all things. It was an insane thing and this week's uh, historical photo of the week is actually of that room. Um, so, I mean, it has changed and been multi-purposed so many times over the last 10 years now. Um, so, but now it's got another exciting purpose. So obviously we've moved all the nocturnal animals right down the bottom there. Um, so the uh, sugar gliders and the mouse lemurs are actually gone. And the armadillos are currently living in the hothouse. So there's nothing in here. It's completely blank shell. And what we're going to do with this is we're gonna kind of create it into our new hothouse. So all the way along here, when you come in, will be all brand new enclosures that are actually living enclosures, which means that they're planted with real plants. No more fake stuff. So they're planted with real plants and they're gonna be quite spacious and it's for all of our inverts and bugs to show them at their best. Um, and also some reptiles, frogs and things like that. We're gonna have a new freestanding frog thing. And then as you come down to the bottom here, still a bit of a mess in here. We're gonna have a brand new big enclosure here, which is gonna be like a tropical rainforest style one for chameleon. This one's super exciting, but I'm not telling you what it is yet, but it is something I've wanted for years. So this whole area here is gonna be something very, very cool. And then as you walk through here, this is all gonna be converted into kind of a deserty, kind of arid thing. So we are putting armadillos back out in here, but we're also gonna bring the tortoises over. And then in here, we're converting these into two kind of savanna style enclosures raising the floor up and we've got our bigger reptiles to go into here. So it's going to be a bit of a journey. So as you come in, you're going to kind of go through rainforest, tropical bugs and stuff. Then you're going to go through arid desert and then you're going to finish off in the nocturnal bit before you pop back out next to the hothouse. So it's a really cool development, something that we wanted to do for quite some time. And it's also going to rehome a lot of the animals that are in the hothouse and repurpose that space as well. So it's never ending. There's always something happening here. So, but obviously the most exciting thing that's happening is the guinea pig village. That's what everyone really, really wants to see. Um, so last week I asked you guys to all vote for your favorite build in our Wild West guinea pig uh, build challenge competition. And the winner that you've chosen is this station. Uh, so super well done to Keith for being the, the public popular vote. It was a really, really cool build and I can't wait to get them outside. Also wanted to say a massive thank you to Juicins and Morbeth who kindly sponsored our competition and gave us some amazing prizes to give away to our staff. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's update and you got to enjoy getting to see our new nocturnal bit. New nocturnal bit will be open hopefully for Easter. Um, so we'll be able to let you in and go see the mouse lemurs and the sugar gliders soon. Uh, this bit's going to take a little bit longer, um, but obviously watch the space and I'll keep updating you as, uh, as we develop it. Um, obviously the weather has gotten a lot better, the fields have hardened up really nice, so we've been working over on the domestics paddock, so I'll give you guys another update next week. And of course if you haven't done already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video and drop a comment below with what you think about how we're doing. You know, we develop at such an alarming rate. Were you here when this used to be rabbits and hamsters and ducks? You know, let us know, I would love to see. And of course, if you have any photos or anything, please do share them with us, because I love to see historical photos, even though it's not really that historical when the zoo is so young. Um, but yeah, if you do like our content, then please do subscribe to our channel, because everything helps us uh, 
with developing the zoo and uh, increasing our conservation efforts and uh, working on doing what we do best. So we'll see you next week. Bye guys.